Hi guys, I have bad news from my off-grid system. You know, my off-grid inverter is seven years old. When I arrived here in the morning, I found this here. I hope you can see it. It's a completely burnt out power supply. It blew the cap off. This one was plugged in up there and was supplying power just to my battery monitor. So it shorted the AC here and the transfer switch changed over to grid automatically. But when I am looking to, at the inverter, luckily there is no error code and the inverter as well is thinking that everything is normal. Good, another job, another repair attempt. We are going to take this must 5000 watt inverter off grid all in one from the wall and then we take a look inside what happened. You can see such stupid $5 parts can completely cause devastation further down the line. So, yeah, when you have an off grid system, the inverter will be the first which will realize uh, overcurrent and then it will try to counter that overcurrent. So, you are protective devices actually don't really have the chance to uh, trigger and because the inverter is already quite old yeah it must have had a weak uh, component inside and that one uh, went unfortunately first but as you can see here complete devastation we had burn marks fire probably all over the place there and as I said this cap just blew off from the pressure wave from whatever made bank here here on my monitoring you can see it happened actually already yesterday at 4 a.m. and yeah, I didn't even notice that is when you have a transfer switch yeah if you don't look you don't even know that your equipment failed well, let's just disassemble the inverter i already saw that breaker here is actually not for the output it is for the ac input so it wouldn't have helped anyway As I said, this is actually my oldest inverter. It's already seven years old. And it held up really nice. I still had to replace the capacitors of the internal power supply twice. And one of them actually looks again a little bit bloated. So yeah, maybe I should replace it again. I have done this around two years ago. And yeah, this seems to be the life expectancy of those capacitors, electric lithium capacitors at that place there. Okay, so I just want to remove this part with the fence so that we can have a good look here at the AC output. So what makes me think that uh, we can be lucky is that the inverter thinks that its AC output is okay. So wherever it measures its AC output, that place is still good. So it can only be 
beyond the AC output term terminals and the place where it measures. And this uh, area here is filled with uh, relays. So it could be that maybe a relay or something uh, has also got a damage and is connected. Yeah, there's nothing to see, unfortunately. Uh, on this side, these here are the AC output terminals. These two, and you see we are just surrounded by relays. Uh, those relays are taking care the switching between uh, invert output, grid, bypass, etc. Yeah, and the board is out. Let's remove the controller. This gives us now a view of this area and we can take some measurements. Uh, I have checked uh, the relays. I have used my bench power supply to activate the coil and they are switching normally. So I can only go a step further. For this inverter I do have a maintenance uh, manual on my computer I file which I once got and now I'm just testing all the circuits according to the maintenance manual. Um, I didn't find anything unusual except that on the IGBT stage, on the output stage, the value is a little bit different than here in the manual. But this could of course be that uh, because the manual seems to be a little bit newer than the inverter that I have here. As I said, my inverter is already quite old. What I have done already, there was again this uh, capacitor here on the power supply. I have replaced it, it was bloated and I have replaced the second capacitor on the control board, uh, which was also bloated there. So yeah, the only thing I can do is just test according my manual. And if I can't find anything, so there is uh, nothing is burned or anything on this board. It looks quite nice. If I can't find anything, I will just reassemble the inverter and see uh, what is going on. I have cleaned the board and yeah, as I said, probably I can't do much more. So, All right, I have reassembled the inverter and also turned it on. And as before, the display is just showing normal. So it, it shows that it is having an output voltage of 229 volts and supplying the loads, right? I only have my bench power supply here. Here you can now easily see how much these inverters are drawing in idle. So the bench power supply says 68 watts. So this is quite a high uh, idle consumption for these uh, all-in-one inverters. But anyway, for me it's much more important uh, to see if it works. So I have set my multimeter to AC voltage and yo, let's check the AC output and yeah, and yeah, voila, it is showing 230 volts. So you uh, hmm. Of course, I'm now going to install the unit again. And then, yeah, we have to have a thought about what could have happened if everything works normally again. But uh, as it seems, 
this might have just been uh, a stuck relay or something like this because of the high current which passes through the uh, context that they welded together. But yeah, nothing we can do more. Let's just hope that the unit as it ru is running here on the bench also will run under normal operations uh, at my off-grid power room. Yeah, the inverter is installed again. We have battery to the loads, 229 volts showing. And this time now on my mm -hmm. transfer switch, we have again the light on the solar side. So I'm going to switch it over to automatic. And yeah, now my junction box here is again uh, connected to the inverter and everything is working. So yeah, the inverter is working again. So what was the problem in my eyes? I think that one of the uh, switch over relays got stuck from the high current. Because when I was testing it with the uh, 12 volts power supply um, and switching the coil, one relay initially did not do anything and then later on it started clicking again. Lucky that this was easy fixable and you know, I took the chance again. Now the inverter is clean and two uh, electrolytic capacitors which usually always make troubles uh, replaced again. But what uh, was actually causing this issue is just plain stupidity by me and I want to show you this now. When I was building my monitor here, I've also installed a DC meter here for the PV. And all of this I needed to supply somehow. So what did I do? I have added those outlets just there, drilled the hole through my junction box here and supplied it. But the stupid thing which I did was I have just connected this outlet to my hot bus and neutral here. So I have actually connected it directly to the power source, which most of the time is the inverter. So there was actually no protective device, no breaker in between my inverter and the outlet. And in this case, of course, I had this stupid Chinese cheapo adapter here. It shorted. And what did the inverter do? The inverter just supplied power as much as it could. It fried that adapter. So during the short, the inverter then switched off. The transfer went to the grid. So I don't know who finished then the adapter. Maybe it was the grid. But luckily, uh, there was nothing uh, bad there other than probably a stuck relay. And yeah, now everything is fine again. That is the reason why you always should put protective devices in between your power source and whatever you run, even if it's just a few watts. And you think what can happen there, nothing, right? But yeah, the devil is not sleeping that adapter. That one got really fried. We are lucky this time again. This is really a great inverter. Some people have been laughing at me when I showed them this and said, oh, you will just have problems. You know, every year you will have to change something there and there. But at the end, this is absolutely a fantastic device. Seven years and it's still strong and going forward. Okay, so I hope you found this video interesting. So please uh, comment as always, like the video, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.